Okay, here we are. It is Celt again. This is, we think, the official game two. And again, the players are very close to one another. Now, <laughs> for some reason, I thought that was a mining camp from Viper, and I freaked out. But last game, Fire used a re. Now, he's not going to be able to do that for the rest of the set. Viper could still use a re. And Viper this time has a map that is questionable. He has gold on the back. He has a stone on the back as well. But he is in a crater, similar to what we saw with Vinchester versus Fire. And while Viper's is a little bit better because his wood line's right here, it's right below a hill. And this one's not really the best for him either. That one's not the best. So Viper has options, not the best options, right? Meanwhile, Fire, he has, well, secondary gold in the back, which he may choose to take. Woodline on the left, and that's where his main gold is as well. So sometimes it's nice because you can protect the same area and you don't have to multitask as much. He does have a wood line on the right as well, which I believe he was going to, but he just switched his decision. He's gonna go to the one on the left. So Fire seems to have a little bit better map, but both players not with perfect maps. I think considering Fire has some forward resources like the stone there and the main gold, that takes away my decision to say that Fire has by far the best map. Uh, we're going to need to pay attention to the boars because Viper now, if you were to run across and let's say superhuman double boar steals, then Fire's not going to be able to call a re. But I think Fire recognizes that and he'll probably go out to that boar as soon as possible. But there will still be one there. Obviously, we're not going to expect a double boar steal here. I'm not sure why Viper's sending a vill out, but he's building a house there. Which is natural at this level, but maybe... Yeah, this is bad from Viper. Look at this. He doesn't have any food underneath his TC. He might be searching for a boar or something. Has he scouted that? Oh, he's not scouted his sheep and his boar over here, so that explains it. Oh, and the boar's going back as well. Karma. Karma for the map hacks. So Viper's now forced to get loom, and this is actually a very good start for Fire. Fire, I believe, stole... There's one sheep there. Yeah, at least one sheep. Nothing to see with the sub. Welcome to the T90 Elite, man. And thanks for the woo-woo-woos in the chat. But yeah, bad start for Viper, and that's not what he wanted. In fact, he has an idol right here. I don't know if you noticed this. There's an idol villager here. Did Fire send the sheep back? Yeah, Fire sent the sheep back, and Viper said thank you. Well... Viper saying you should steal one, make it fair. Viper still has an idle villager. That's that's just bad, very bad for a player of his caliber. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that Fire's gonna wander over here now, and he'll probably find these sheep. Now the question is, he's probably smiling. If he finds them, he's probably gonna smile. Uh, will he steal them then? Now it looks like the answer is no, because he didn't go that direction. And now Fire's saying thank you because Viper did not attack him, but Viper now just finding his boar and his sheep, so... I don't want to say perfect timing for him, because now he's collecting another sheep, but... he's able to survive. Nothing too bad. Too horribly bad. There's a barracks from fire, something I did talk about last game, before the re came in, is the metagame for Celts, and oftentimes you'll see a drush into crossbows. Of course, you need to get to the castle age to get crossbows, and because the players are so close to one another, I can't help but feel we could see some feudal pressure. Could be man-at-arms into archers, drush into archers. Uh, by the way, to those that are possibly confused, you'll see the deer have little red noses, so they're actually Rudolph. And also, when Regicide is involved, the king will be Santa Claus, and I did show that off earlier. If you stop by the stream on the 20th at 15, 17, and 1900 GMT, we're going to have some big regicide games. Uh, Resonance 22 is confirmed to co-cast. I believe Zero Empires will co-cast, depending on his schedule, and uh, Dave hopefully as well. But I will be streaming 12 hours that day with that mod. But it looks like Fire is going to now Drush, and he could always try and get Man-at-Arms upgrade in, but it looks like Drush is the choice. He's housed for a bit. And Fire's going to wall off on the front, which I really like. Because if he walls off on the front, that makes that gold and wood a lot better for him. 
Now Viper, I think, is going Man at Arms. You can see he clicked up a little bit earlier. He's sending two to gold. And he's going to need a barracks, but I'm expecting Man at Arms. So this is actually a good position for fire, especially with this small hill. He has the scout here. Viper's probably expecting a drush, and it looks to me like Fire's going to try and stop this. But are you kidding me? Look at that! Look at that! Viper doesn't see the drush, but he sees the drush. That barracks could have been denied. And now he's quick walling off as well. Bad timing for Fire, because it looks like Viper is going to secure his wood line for now. But the gold can be disrupted. And it's not easy to palisade everything like that. It's not easy to have idle villagers underneath your TC, so it's not perfect for Viper. Viper is going to go man-at-arms, though, and I assume he will transition into archers. A fire back at home is walling up a bit. Like, he can wall this off here, too, so I think fire is in a better position by far. Especially if he damages the gold villagers from Viper, but I think Viper is going to be tempted to maybe go forward as well. Man-at-arms trush could come in. He has so many villagers out here, you just never know. Well, he's going to collect the deer for now, because he's had some idols underneath his TC. Yeah. And... Viper is sending three forward. So he's sending three forward. He's going to get man-at-arms eventually. He doesn't have the resources. I just can't help but think this is stubborn from fire not to wall this off. If Fire doesn't have any defensive military, he'll probably get a range up as soon as possible. Two ranges. But he could have walled this off. Now, he doesn't know that Viper's coming in with villagers, but he might expect it. At this level, you have to expect it. And also, Fire, he's probably scanning around and he's like, where are Viper's villagers at? He might be guessing they're on the front, but I mean, he has to know that they're doing something that he's not going to be happy with. There's a tower from Viper on the front. Man-at-arms coming in. I want to know what Viper has scouted. This is important, guys, because the gold on the back was taken by Fire. So Fire recognizing this could be a possibility. He didn't even take this gold. Viper has not scouted that. In fact, he didn't. He doesn't even know the main gold is there. So Viper, with lack of scouting, could really struggle. Now, there's a tower from Fire. The, the top side of his wood line's exposed. But... I think he's just trying to push those men in arms in towards DC and trap a Viper. Viper knowing that going around. And now he's going with the range. So Viper will go with skirmishers. No doubt about it. He needs to go with skirmishers to counter the archers. And fire is in the better position. And I said that before, but that definitely has to be the case now. Look at this. Viper sending his military back to address the man at arms back at his base. Very smart decision from fire to get man at arms himself. And Viper's going to have to repair. I wonder what this game would be like if one villager could not repair as fast as three man-at-arms attacked. You know what I mean? Like, how many times can you do that? To be honest, it probably wouldn't be as enjoyable, but it would definitely change things. And Fire's now sending out two archers, two skirmishers, and you can see the skirms coming out from Viper. We're probably going to see more men in arms too. I mean, you have to think that more men in arms could be a possibility if skirmishers are there. And that's an awful engagement for fire. Look at that. He's lost two units there for nothing. I think Viper could be tempted to go with more men in arms. Look at this. Man in arms scout converging. Four men in arms for Viper. Two skirmishers. Looks like three archers and two skirmishers for fire. I don't think that's enough. But man, this is messy. Viper has forward villagers here as well. On stone, one villager's gone down now. Small hill advantage for fire. Scale mail coming in for Viper. So he's going for the infantry upgrades, and he's going to be forced off this hill. Fletching coming in for fire, so right when Fletching comes in, his man and arms are really going to struggle, and now Viper is getting pushed back. But still, fire needs to be careful. He does not want to get in close, and he's doing just that. The archers go down, the man and arms can actually do some work. I think Viper wants to take a fight, and he's now pushing in with villagers as well. Man, how messy is this? Villagers fighting, it's never ideal, but just enough to kill all the men in arms, lower a lot of the HP here, fires units, and push fire away for now. 
I'm looking at the HP on the man-at-arms from Viper. These are actually really strong man-at-arms. And there's skirmishers here as well from Viper. <clears throat> That's exceptional. That is exceptional. That's a great fight. And Fire probably should just sit back at home and wait. Like, why is he fighting here? The man-at-arms are too tanky. They have a defense upgrade. The moment a skirmisher comes out from Viper, it's going to attack the archer right away. And just whittle down the expensive gold units. I don't know. Like, so messy from Viper, but... He's done a decent job. If you look at the build count, Fire is two ahead. And also... Viper's been sending his villagers around far too much for my liking. So, we'll have to see, but it looks like Fire. Get ready for it, guys. Denied. <laughs> for some reason, I thought those archers were going to die, or one of the archers was going to die, but Fire recognizing it and just shooting the wolf. So, woo woo woo, denied. Uh, but a messy game. And finally, I have a little bit of time to talk about things. Fire recognizing there's a tower going up here from Viper. I wonder if Viper will move that. He will not. Another range coming up from Viper now as well. I swear, I'm watching the wolves with these archers. That's a good tower from Viper just to delay the wood line. Fire's gonna have, well, he's gonna have to run to the right side and he's doing that now. When's the last time we saw Fire run for a wood line? Didn't end so well against Vinchester, did it? But you know what? I really like this move from Fire. He's running in with archers, enough archers to kill villagers, and a couple skirms. Low HP, full HP, doesn't matter. There's no military here for Viper, and Viper will lose one villager, and probably will not lose that one. Gonna have to run away from the gold as well, and this is messy stuff for Viper. I did see Man-at-Arms run in from Viper, but he might be sending, yeah, the military back now. So this is the second time that Viper has had to send his military back. Will he push... Fire back towards his own base this time around. I think Fire is going to hit and run. That'd be the better move. But I mean, now Viper's running out to this goal. This has been well played from Fire. And if you look at his resources, getting Wheelbarrow now is going to have a strong economy. And now if you look at Viper's resources, he is stretched thin. But still, Viper recognizing where this army will go gonna run around and, and try and pick these units off but the problem is he doesn't have a ton of ranged units so fire can still run away and basically preoccupy viper's army the man at arms are kind of useless in that fight i think i mean i don't know i think viper's trying to get map control with his towers more than anything but the man at arms like they don't need to be there the archers and the skirmishers should be enough for viper but he's just gonna use these guys anyway Maybe just trying to give them some use in life. Maybe they don't feel valued. Who knows? But good little trap there from Viper. He's actually trying to send some of these units away instead. And in the end, he will push those units away. So what Viper's doing is he's getting map control. But if you look at his economy, it is disgusting. It makes me want to barf all over the place. So he needs to do something more with aggression. And I think what he's trying to do now is just harass as much as possible. But Fire, he's getting closer, looking up to the Castle Age. He knows Viper's going to try and go for another tower, and he's killed one villager, and he's going to stop that from happening. Castle Age upgrade's going to come in for Fire, and I guess the question is, what will he do then? I feel like Knights... Okay, so think back to the Vinchester vs. Fire game. On my YouTube, it is labeled as Aggressive Arabia. Game 3, I believe. Fire, had he gone Knights in that game versus Vinchester, I think he would have won. Despite being down in the economy. But, he didn't do that. Certainly this game is much different because Fire is going to be in the Castle Age first and he's going to be ahead in economy. But, Knights would do a lot here, I think. And running into towers and skirmishers with your archers is a bad move. He's going to get crossbow, but there's going to be a tower on his archery ranges, most likely. But oh, we'll have to see. And all the counter units are out for Viper. Knights would go underneath defensive towers. Knights would be the better move. Even though it's Celts, it's just going to be a little bit better. But this is really, really bad for fire. Because Viper has found this wood line. In fact, if you look at Fire's point of view, he's just now finding it. And 
This is amazing for Viper. He's got to be so satisfied with this. He even has the man at arms still here. How many villagers have gone down here for fire? So many are going down, and he's fighting with villagers versus archers. Fire recognizing he needs to keep his army alive, but this is just awful. Awful, awful. Viper coming in at the perfect time. And you know what? He almost should have recognized that a little bit earlier because the wood on the left was completely denied. Viper's army getting cleaned up, but I think he did enough damage. He's still... I don't want to say forever feudal, but going to be stuck in the feudal age for a while. But... Oh! Viper's calling the GG! Viper's calling the GG. He's too far behind. There wasn't a large army left from fire, but... That castle age time was just too- Oh, the stables were in the back. I didn't see the stables in the back either. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, That's a good move. The knights would have done it, but a uh, viper maybe just recognizing that there's too much- Too much to do to come back from that. He, he had no way of coming back when he's not even up to the castle age. He's not Vinchester. Oh, and fire's over here as well. Uh, It's funny when a game ends and you try and review and then you realize you missed two things. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Villagers are going down here on Viper's face. And to be honest, his map was exposed. So, with knights as well, would have been over. And let's take a look at the Chiefs. You can see it's very close. It's all about execution sometimes. Fire has more resources, not because he had more villagers, but because he had less idle time. And Viper had a, a rough game from the start. A thousand people here. That is true. A thousand people here. Awesome stuff. And let's get into game three. So that means we will see arena or islands. And traditionally, we've seen islands last. The Viper gets.